Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an infinite fraction with complex numbers or should I say imaginary numbers or an imaginary unit which is I. So I is a very special number. I mean it's kind of real, we use it all the time but for some reason it's called imaginary. Just imagine that we have a number whose square equals negative 1, and that number would be i. So we couldn't solve some of the equations in algebra, such as x squared equals negative 1, and we had to invent a number whose square equals negative 1, and that number happens to be i. But this implies something. If you square negative i, it is also negative 1, because their squares are equal, right? You get the idea? So what does that mean? It means that there are two numbers whose square is negative 1, actually. Or negative 1 has two square roots in the complex world. So complex world is interesting. It's kind of complex, but it's also interesting at the same time. So we've done a similar problem before with i all the way down to infinity. But this time, it's alternating. I hope you notice we have a plus sign and a minus sign. And then we have a plus sign, and that'll be followed by a minus sign, so on and so forth. Plus, minus, plus, minus. I mean, we could also have plus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, or plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, so on and so forth. You can come up with so many patterns. Now, one of the million dollar questions about this problem is, does this value actually converge? Can we talk about convergence of complex numbers? Can this be written as a sequence? So many questions, right? Don't worry. We're not going to answer those questions. We're just going to explore this. In a very loose sense, I know some people don't like it when things aren't that rigorous. Okay, this is not for rigor, this is just for fun, okay? <laughs> if you're very rigorous, let us know in the comments section, I'm pretty sure you will. Anyways, so we have the i plus i over i minus i over i plus i over i minus, you get the idea? Kind of like music, right? Okay, how do we solve these kinds of expressions? How do we find the value, if there's a value for this? Well, it's kind of easy, again, loosely speaking. Let's go ahead and get rid of all these extra drawings and writings. And we're going to go ahead and set this expression equal to something. I don't know what it is, so I'm going to call it Z, right? Instead of the question mark, Z will represent the question mark, okay? Let's go ahead and make a big one so that we can kind of cover up the question mark as much as possible. Hopefully you get the idea. Okay, I'm going to set this whole thing equal to Z. And this thing actually repeats itself. In other words, it includes itself. Isn't that weird? Like self-inclusion maybe? Is that what it's called? Yes, this is an infinite fraction and it includes itself infinitely many times. It's like infinitely crazy or infinitely complex. So where does the repetition start though? That's one of the things you need to be careful about. Because if you had i plus i over i plus i over dot dot dot, then you could immediately say, hey, if I set it equal to W, then this will be the same thing. Easy. But here, you can't say the same thing because if you just take that, that is a minus sign. Be careful, guys. So you have to be very careful with these things. Don't make quick assumptions. Take your time, especially with complex numbers. You really want to take a second look. Okay, great. So here's what we're going to do, though. Where does the I plus I over something starts? I plus, uh, well, it's kind of partly my fault. I should have written it. Maybe a little bit more I should give you. I plus I over I minus dot, dot, dot. Maybe put the dot, dot, dot over here. Apologize. I should make it a little more clear. But this is where it starts. So you can kind of tell. You start with the plus sign and the next one is a minus sign. So you should go for the second plus sign. You know what I'm talking about? And where it starts, of course, it starts with I. Everything starts with I, right? So this is the part that... Is the same as the whole thing kind of weird but again that includes itself one more time and whatever that includes that includes itself so infinitely many times kind of like a crazy stuff right but this gives us something super duper helpful because if the whole thing was called z then this part is also z which allows us to write the following i plus i over i too many i's minus i, one more i, bear with me, divided by z, yay, finally, equals z, there you go. Once you do that, the rest should be fairly easy, like easy, okay, 
notability. I don't know why do you do that sometimes. Anyway, so this is my equation. How am I going to solve it? Let's get rid of all the fractions. Fractions are annoying, right? Don't you think? So let's go ahead and multiply this by z and multiply this by z. So we're not changing the whole thing, just multiplying the numerator and the denominator of a fraction. Of course, we have to assume that z does not equal 0. Do you think this can be 0? I don't think so. It's very unlikely. But you can take note, z does not equal 0 if you want. Now, after distributing the z, we're going to get i plus zi over zi minus. The z's are going to cancel out. Notice that. That's why I multiply by z. And I'm going to be getting just an i. And that's equal to z. Great. We're closer to the solution. Now let's go ahead and make a common denominator, or you could multiply by zi minus i, whatever. It doesn't matter, no big deal. The common denominator is going to be zi minus i anyway. So multiply i by zi minus i, and then add zi to it. And then at the bottom, you're going to have zi minus i, and it's going to equal z. So many z's and i's together, right? It's kind of like a jumbo mumbo. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and distribute i squared z minus i squared plus zi. And I want to go ahead and cross multiply. I can't wait. z squared i minus zi. Great. i squared is negative 1, so it's going to be negative 1z or negative z. This is a positive 1. This is a zi. This is a i z squared and then minus zi. Now, this looks like a quadratic equation to me. Does it look like that to you? Because we have a z squared and a z bunch of z's. Let's go ahead and put all your z's, uh, make sure to dot your i's, uh, on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and bring another zi. That's going to give me minus 2zi, 2z or not 2z. And then plus z, and then minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. This should be a quadratic i z squared. But I can go ahead and put these together. So I want to get the coefficient of, uh, uh, I was going to say i, but not, not i, z. The coefficient of z is 1 minus 2i. So that's the coefficient of z, minus 1 equals 0. Notice that if this is quadratic in z. If you haven't noticed, I'm going to use a different color to make it more clear. Do you see that? This is quadratic in z. And we're solving for z. Isn't that amazing? Are we? I mean, the whole expression we said equal to z. So I guess we're trying to find z here, right? So z from the quadratic formula is going to be negative b, the opposite of this, which is 2i minus 1, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is this expression squared, minus 4ac, which is 4 times i times negative 1. And then go ahead and, you know, put that all under the radical, divide by 2i. All right, let's simplify this, 2i minus 1. This expression, when expanded, is going to give us 1 minus 4i plus 4i squared, which is minus 4, minus plus 4i. It's like minus, 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 plus. You get the idea? We multiply two negatives. That makes a positive. Okay. Now, good thing that 4i cancels out. Is that amazing? I wasn't planning for this, but it just came about. And now we have something simpler because I didn't want to get an... Um, complex number in standard form under the radical because then I would have to take the square root which is sometimes not very nice or pleasant. 2i minus 1 plus minus the square root of negative 3. Can I write it as root 3i? Absolutely we can. Divide by 2i. Now if you wanted to fix this a little bit, first uh, of all let's bring the imaginary parts together. We can write it as 2 plus minus root 3 and that's going to be the imaginary part. And we're going to divide it by 2i. Let's get rid of the i at the bottom. Multiply by negative i. Because that's what I usually do. Some people multiply by i. And then they have to take care of the negative. Too, too much work. I don't know. Anyways, negative 1 times negative i is positive i. And when I multiply i by negative i, that's going to become negative i squared. Which is positive 1. So I can totally forget about that thing. And just write this as 2 plus minus root 3. And that is divided by 2 because negative i squared is 1 again. Just divide by 2 and you'll get the answer. But wait a minute, there are two answers. One of them is z equals 2 plus root 3 plus i divided by 2. Or I can write it as 2 plus root 3 over 2 plus 1 half of i. So that it's in the a plus b i form, right? And the other solution is going to be z equals 2 minus root 3, right? 
plus i over 2. And again, that can be written as 2 minus root 3 over 2 plus 1 half of i. So imaginary parts do not change. So which of these would be the solution? Can there be two solutions to the numerical expression? That's a good question. And I'm going to leave it as an exercise for the audience. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.